Hello, welcome to our brief video tutorial for connecting a, to a Unitronix controller and updating the operating system. My name is Michael Poles. I'm an applications engineer here at Unitronix. We'll explain the process required to ensure we can establish a reliable connection and how to update the operating system of a controller. This will then be followed by an example walkthrough. Using Unitronix Visilogic programming software, in the communication cables, we will set up and connect to a Unitronics PLC and establish and confirm communication. We will then check the operating system of the controller once communication is confirmed and define the steps to update the operating system. The first step is to ensure you are connecting with the appropriate hardware. Stemming from the PLC, we will work our way back to the PC You will connect one end of the RS-232 programming cable with an RJ-11 jack to the PLC. This is supplied with the part number MJ-10-22-CS25 kit. The other end will connect to a RJ-11 to DB9 RS-232 serial adapter. This will have the part number MJ10-22-CS25 labeled on the adapter. As this is included with the previously mentioned RS-232 cable to comprise the full kit. If your PC has an available DB9 serial connection, you can then directly connect to the PC. However, many PCs no longer have this serial option. Therefore, if there is no serial connection available, you will need to use a USB to serial converter. This will be part number MJ10-22-CS35. This will directly connect from a USB port to the RS-232 serial adapter. This is an additional part that will not be included with the PLC and will need to be ordered separately. Once we have confirmed the physical components are the intended parts, we can then ensure the physical connection is made as defined. The terminal end of the communication cable must be inserted into port 1 of the PLC. The jumper settings or jumpers are set for RS-232 communication for that port. Please check the installation guide documentation for the controller you are currently working with to confirm. We will then confirm the serial cable and USB adapter conform to the part numbers listed. For example, the connector used in modem communications has a different part number and pinout than the connector used in this case. Despite its almost identical appearance, the part number listed on the converter will differ and if used in lieu of the intended device will ultimately result in failure. Some of our controllers have the ability to be programmed through the mini USB programming port if the unit is equipped with this feature. For example, the 1210, 1040, and 570 units. There is no additional hardware required. It will be a direct connection from the USB of the PC to the mini USB of the PLC with no intermediary devices. Keep in mind the COM port 1 function will be suspended when the USB is physically connected to the PC. The USB device does need a driver and the USB port only supports OS and project download. If requested to use the Windows Update for the driver, please refrain from using this option. Skip obtaining driver software from the Windows Update. Install only the driver provided by Visilogic. This is shown to the right. The USB cable must be disconnected during the installation.
Prior to working with VisiLogic to check communication with the controller, we need to ensure the drivers are installed and functioning as intended. VisiLogic has a brilliant shortcut that will allow us to open the device manager from within the communication and PC settings window. As shown, we can use the connection drop-down menu to select communication and OS. The final tab in the window is marked with the USB icon and will contain the driver we previously discussed as well as the open device manager option. Within the device manager of your PC, you will find the ports location will display the drivers used for communication. You can see the USB to serial driver and or the USB driver if applicable in the ports they are associating themselves with. Within the communication and PC settings window, found under the drop down menu, by selecting communication in OS as shown in the previous slide, you will find the first tab is the communication settings. Here we will set the baud rate depending on the type of controller we are working with. For standard controllers, we will set the baud rate to 57600. For enhanced controllers, we will use the baud rate of 115200 as shown in the example. You will then check the device manager as shown in the previous slide to confirm there are no outstanding errors or warnings with the associated ports. Take note of the COM port number as it can be confirmed here and then use to align the port within VisiLogic software by entering the port number as shown. Once this is completed, we can then select Get OPLC Information to check and confirm PLC communication. It will return information in the OPLC information box when you establish communications successfully with the controller. Now we've been able to communicate with the controller. We want to ensure we are using the most up-to-date operating system we can with the PLC. Under the Help drop-down menu, there will be a Check for Updates option. In the cascading menu, you will find an option to check for operating system updates. This will require a connection to the web. When selected, the live update window will appear with a valid connection. If the continue button is pressed, the software will communicate with our servers automatically and update the operating system files within the software if required or outdated. You will receive one or two messages at this point in the process. If the software is up to date and no new files are available, you will be notified that you have the most recently released elements. If your software does not contain the most recent OS files, it will begin automatically updating the files and display a progress bar. Once completed, the live update will notify you of the successfully downloaded files. To check the current OS of the controller we are working with, we'll again go to the connection drop-down in the communication and OS option. Select Get OPLC Information to confirm communication with the PLC. Then, on the fourth tab, indicated by the yellow VisiLogic eye, we can check and install an operating system. Select Check begin the process. Please note, by default, the OS version shows the most recent OS released with your version of VisiLogic. To check if more recent OS versions are available, please be sure to run the live update from the web. If an OS update is required, a Unitronix installation wizard will appear and guide you through the required steps. You'll be welcomed to the wizard and be prompted to select Next to begin. Another box will then appear, defining the number of steps in required operations. You again will select Next to continue. Once the process of updating the operating system in the PLC has begun, you will see a progress bar and a pointer within the wizard 
defining the process and progress of the operation. When a step is completed, a green check indicates success, where red X signifies failure. Once the process has successfully been completed and all required steps are finished, the wizard will notify you that you have completed successfully. You will then select Finish. This will begin to exit the wizard. Upon exit, you'll be prompted to send a run command to the PLC, as while updating the controller, it will not be running. Once the PLC is running, after this point, you will be finished. If you get to a condition where an OS update is not required, and your controller is up to date, and there are no available updates within VisiLogic, when check is selected, the wizard will notify you that you are up to date and an upgrade is not needed. You can then select finish with the confidence that you are up to date. This concludes the PowerPoint presentation. We can now move forward to the walkthrough portion of the video. To begin, let's say you have just received a PLC in the box and you are ready to utilize it. The first thing we are going to do is establish communication with the controller. Before we even attempt anything, we'll cover the components. The RS-232 cable and serial adapter, part number MJ10. 22-CS25 were provided and are connected to the RS-232 to USB converter, part number MJ10-22-CS35, and this is plugged into the USB port on my PC. The next step is to plug the serial cable into port 1 of the PLC. Provided that the unit has power already, we will no longer be touching any physical cables from this point further. We can move forward to checking the driver by checking the ports in Device Manager. To open Device Manager, we can use the Connection drop-down. Select Communication in OS. In the last tab, we will find the shortcut to the Device Manager. Here, under the ports location, once expanded, we can see I'll be using COM4 and my driver is installed with no apparent errors or warnings indicated. So therefore, we can now back up to the communication and PC window where we can enter the valid communication information. Here, I'm using a serial connection, and I will be using PC port COM4, as we had just noted. We will then select a baud rate of 115200, because I will be working with a V570. Now all the parameters are entered. We will then select Get OPLC Information to see if we can successfully communicate with the controller. And success is confirmed by the information populated in the block shown. Once we've established communication, we will then move forward to ensure we have the most up-to-date OS for the controller. For this task, we will navigate to the Help menu and select Check for Updates. We then select Operating System because this is the selection we wish to check. We Select Continue in the Live Update box to connect with the Unitronic servers and update the software with the OS files as needed. Keep in mind that you are required to have a valid internet connection for this procedure. Once completed, we then select OK and move to the next step. This will actually update the controller with the new OS. For this, we will go to the Connection drop-down and we'll select communication in OS. We'll double check communication settings here to confirm we are still successfully communicating with the controller. Then on the fourth tab we'll find the option to install the operating system. 
We will then select check. If an OS update is required, the wizard will guide you through the following steps. Here we can see it is required that I update the operating system, and I will select Next to continue. The wizard will then notify you the update steps and require a prompt to begin. Select Next to begin the process. As we are working through, you will see the progress bar at the bottom and the steps shown in the progression we're going to take. This process will take some time, so we will fast forward to the end of the OS operating system update. Once completed, you'll see the wizard will notify you the operation has completed successfully. We will then select Finish. The software will then prompt the user to run the PLC with the new OS. We'll select Yes, to com and we are complete with the update. We'll now look into the responses from the software if you are already current with OS updates within Visilogic as well as the PLC itself. Again, we'll use the process to find earlier to check for updates. We'll go to Help, Check for Updates, and we will check the operating system. Again, I will select Continue. And we can see I have been updated with the most recently released elements within Visilogic. Now, no further action is required. Now, we want to check the PLC to ensure that we are up to date. So again, I'll go to the Connection and Communication and OS drop-down menu. The fourth tab, I can check the operating system. Here we can see the wizard notifies us that we are up to date and no further update is required. We can now download an application confident that we are ready and completely up to date with the available firmware. Thank you. This concludes the presentation of connecting to a PLC and downloading an operating system. Hope you found the information helpful. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us or send us your questions in an email to support at unitronics.com. Thank you.